Um, interlinear graphs are but it's what John started to use in this uh, course of lecture for the first time today. Um, they look something like uh, like a little dot for a on stressor and a big dot for a and this is supposed to represent the, the pitch range. So And this represents a pitch change. So this is an utterance. In fact, um, this is a, obviously a convenience to have this as a, two horizontal lines. Um, in the phonetic truth of the phonetic truth of, of spoken English at any rate, and I think it's universally true, is that it should be like that. Because any any tone group that you start to deliver tends to drop all the way down. Whatever the relative up and down is, it all tends to drop until you get to the end of that tone group. And then you go back up here. And then you and then you visit again. So but it, the, the the whole the whole thing is reset here. Um, this process I know as um, declinational. Um, and it, it just it runs from one the end of one tone group to another. But it will be very messy to have to write things like that, so people just keep it level, but we, we know that it in fact drops down. So we've now got interlinear marks which have the stress syllables and the pitch change here. And we have the words to go with it. Um, um, did you do that? I didn't want to tell him about it. Good. Good. How many word groups or tone groups are there in that utterance? How many word groups? Um, we had a, a few questions some days ago where I read out four or five utterances like impossible, impossible. And you were telling me there's two word groups here. And we had carrots, cheese, bananas, and lettuce. And then we had one, two, three, four. So there were four word groups. What I'm asking is that hearing this spoken with this intonation pattern, how many word groups? Maybe, maybe there are two possibilities, maybe there's one possibility. Where's the nucleus? Tell. What kind of a nucleus is it? I, I fall. So, and what's um, what's hap what's this? What's happening here? Tail. Tail. And the pitch is flat, really. So you'd have to you'd notate the stress on this with a little circle. Didn't want to tell him about it, <laughs> but is there any possibility? That there is a second nucleus here anywhere. Hmm? And what kind of nucleus would it be if it was? So the head or it would yeah, I would think that I can't see how you can have I didn't want to tell him about it. I can't see how you could have in that, from that shape, more than one tone group or word group. This will be the head. I mean, I think John Wells is going to do the, the, lecture, the lecture tomorrow on types of head. So I don't want to jump ahead of that. We can talk about the different types of head in tomorrow's class. But we have worked on word groups and amounts of word groups. And I just think that that whole shape with that nucleus seems to be impossible to say 
in more than one word group. But um, there are other possibilities. Read the sentence out with that intonation of shape. Could you try saying this? I didn't want to tell him about it. I didn't? I didn't want to tell him about it. Right, that's getting, that's getting more like you. How many word groups are there here? Two word groups, yeah. And where are the two nucleus, nuclei? One, two, Okay, so what type of nucleus is this? I thought. And how about this one? No, no rise. So we've got a, we've got two. The only, the only possibility for this shape of intonation is to have two word groups. So, you have a division here. I didn't want to tell him about it. I didn't want to tell him about it. Now let's try this, this one more possibility for this. Okay, have a look at that. So you can read that from the interlinear graph. I didn't want to tell him about it. I didn't want to tell him. Yes, that was, that was getting there. <laughs> so, just let me, let me try and do it in a, a native speaker's, um, my intuitive pronunciation of this would be, I didn't want to tell him about it. I didn't want to tell him about it. I didn't want to tell him about it. The first two times I was doing this too low, actually. I, should, I didn't want to tell him about it. I didn't want to tell him about it. How many word groups have we got? Yeah. So we've got two word groups, but we've got a division here instead. And um, the, the meaning of this is simply to push the negative up, focus the, the, on the negative. I think, was it yesterday's lecture, I think John Wells was talking about how we, we, we actually can now be focused contracted negatives. In, uh, in English. And this is what's happening here. So you've got two word groups and two nuclei. Where are the, where are the two nuclei? Which words are the nuclei? Did and tell. And what type of, what type of nuclei? Four rights. What's the name? I didn't want to tell him about it. I didn't want to tell you about it. So, um, you can actually learn, you can actually learn to, to relate this, the, the, the strict pitch information to the um, notation, the uh, intonation notation, the O'Connor analysis of can be directly related to um, just what it looked like music, in effect, just up and down the pitch range that the speaker has.